All right, everybody. Well, we're going to get started for today's webinar. Um, we have a number of people on the line today, some of us on the uh, Bianchi Matica Nonprofit Plus Solutions side, um, and then a few attendees as well. We're also going to be putting this video up for uh, a number of other nonprofits in the Pennsylvania area. Um, the reason why we're here today is we're teaming up with our friends from Empower Business Solutions um, who serve the central and western Pennsylvania regions. And um, we're going to be talking about some nonprofit accounting and cloud uh, specific technologies, one being Acumatica, and then the other one being this nonprofit accounting suite. Um, and really how this can be leveraged going through the different modules and functionality. Um, before I introduce Tim, just one other formatting type thing I'd like to mention is um, today we're just giving an overview of cloud technology um, and of functionality. Um, th this isn't meant to be a demo. We're not actually going to go into the software at all, um, uh, but we'd be more than happy to meet with you later this week to give you a demo of our, our solution specifically. Uh, today's really just a half hour discussion of what else is available from a cloud technology standpoint and also a nonprofit functionality um, perspective. Many of our customers are currently using products like QuickBooks or maybe something older uh, like Financial Edge, uh, client server install, and they're looking to move their applications organization wide to the cloud. Um, that's really what we're going to be talking about today, and we're excited to do that with Tim from Empower. Um, my name is Jeremy Patoka. I'm the Director of Sales and Partner Strategy at Nonprofit Plus. And uh, we have Tim Lamberson on the line as well today, who's going to be kicking it off and talking a little bit about what Empower does. And Tim is the Customer Success Manager at Empower Business Solutions. So, Tim, Thanks I'll... Thanks very much, Jeremy. I appreciate that. Oh. Great. Sorry, I stepped on your feet there. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Jeremy, and uh, great to be with, uh, with you and everyone. I'm the uh, Customer Success Manager here at Empower, so, um, you know, I'm kind of the uh, first line and last line of uh, the process where, uh, you know, we, we engage with new customers and then, uh, you know, also bring them through the, the buying journey and then the implementation and you know, just make sure their expectations are being met at every step of the way. So a little bit about Empower, as Jeremy mentioned, we're, uh, we're actually based in central PA, Altoona, Pennsylvania, and we've been working with local and regional customers in central and western PA since 1989. Uh, our, all of our customers are either small or mid-market customers, so uh, anywhere from the you know, 10 million range up to you know, three, four, or 500 million. Um, we've always focused in on working with regional customers because we believe, and our customers have always told us this, that having that local support and that on-site presence and that ongoing relationship is really, really important for them, especially when they're doing something as substantial as changing business systems. Uh, they need, you know, just somebody they can knock ideas off of, you know, make sure all the milestones are being met in a proactive way. And that's something that is uh, work for our customers. And we're really happy that we can provide that. Some of the common challenges that we typically see when uh, first uh, speaking with a prospective customer is usually their, their current software package, whether it be QuickBooks or Jeremy mentioned Financial Edge, is really kind of hindering their growth or, you know, they're hitting a wall with it. They're, they're just not able to, you know, uh, hit, use it in, in the most robust fashion. Uh, it's shorting, fall, uh, falling short of their expectations. Um, sometimes they're using multiple systems and, you know, these systems aren't connecting. They're not all uh, syncing up and, you know, there's no way to report off certain data. So, you know, there, there's that disconnect there that is uh, always falling short of, you know, what they need. Uh, or it could be he heavily customized. Um, typically, a system, you know, can be, uh, uh, you know, told to do this, 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 and this. But then, you know, if there if there's a hiccup or an issue down the line, you know, uh, it's very to uh, upgrade it or uh, make that change going forward. Um, so that so that's a little short short snapshot of uh, of Empower, and um, where uh, I'm gonna. I think at this point, just push it back to Jeremy because I think, uh, you know, we want to look at the product, but, you know, that's who we are a little bit. And 
We've been an Acumatica partner for about three years now. We're really excited to be working with Jeremy um, and Nonprofit Plus. They have an excellent solution, and uh, you know, it's a modern cloud-based solution that was important for us and uh, for our customers going forward. So, Jeremy. Great, thank you, Tim. And that's a great segue into our next section here, um, really talking about why vendors and uh, implementation organizations like ourselves have decided to move to the Acumatica Cloud ERP. Um, what were the reasons for that? Why are we so excited about it? And why have we really abandoned the, uh, the legacy systems that we used to sell and implement? Um, our organization has been in business for 25 years as well. And, uh, and in a number of different applications. And this one is uh, really, really groundbreaking for a couple of reasons. So when we're starting to talk about cloud technologies, the first thing you might think of is web-based, okay? And that's really what a true cloud solution is. You can access it from a URL. There's no remote desktop. There's no um, additional application you need. You're using a web browser. Um, another thing that you would like that, that you're going to be looking for in a new vendor uh, or in a cloud accounting solution is really somebody that is an expert in ERP in the cloud. Okay, um, our Acumatica solution is backed by some really big names and was founded by folks that have been involved in the ERP space since the 80s. Okay, uh, specifically to Acumatica. The reason you're talking to us is because they believe in using a partner channel 100%. Um, and you'll see that that's a trend really in the ERP space uh, with a number of different systems. And, and the reason that we really like this is because we get to work with folks who live around the corner from us. Um, we all operate nationally and we, we partner up as Nonprofit Plus with um, solution providers like Empower Business Solutions to serve the population that is just, you know, maybe within an hour or two driving distance from their office. And uh, the reason why we're all so excited about this is just the shift from applications in, in our local environments and really moving to the cloud. Um, and kind of a second step, there would be the multi-cloud. So we're talking about one cloud connected to another. Data maybe from your donor management system flowing into your um, cash sales or cash receipts uh, in your ERP system. That's just one example of the types of things that we integrate with from a CRM standpoint. Uh, I mentioned already that an ERP solution uh, at this day and age should provide you access from anywhere on any device. And Acumatica does just that. You can actually access it on your mobile phone, on a computer screen. Um, you can access it from the browser on your tablet or a native mobile application as well. Uh, another differentiator about Acumatica in this cloud space specifically is that it has inclusive licensing. And what that means is unlimited users. Um, historically, in other systems that we've all been a part of and used, you would have to purchase seats or you'd have to purchase how many users? My accounting staff is seven, and I'd like seven users in the system. Um, and when we grow, I need to buy another one. So I need to buy eight, nine, ten, all the way up. Um, this inclusive licensing really removes that restriction and allows you to focus on growing the way that makes sense for you with the types of users that you need. It really removes bottles, bottlenecks and improves results. And uh, it, overall, it just connects the organization. One of our customers right now has five locations, two warehouses, a fundraising office, and then a, a, corporate, uh, a corporate office in the, the greater uh, Dallas area. And this is a really big thing for them was even people that might just be submitting a time card or an expense claim, they, they needed access to one central hub of data. Um, and now we're really getting rid of spreadsheets and mail back and forth and a number of things. Now, there's a bunch of different ways that you can get to the cloud with your ERP system. And a lot of vendors give you one option. Um, Acumatica gives you many different ways to license and deploy the uh, ERP system. And one could be a public cloud. What, what that would be is Amazon Web Services uh, or the Acumatica cloud itself. And it's really a SaaS environment. There's no IT for you to manage and it's a rolling subscription. 
Um, this option in the center is really neat. For those of you that have an IT department, you already have invested in your own resources, you have your own servers, um, and you would either like to purchase it, just like you did maybe your software 15 years ago, uh, purchase a perpetual license, or you can pay a subscription and essentially rent the software. So in this situation, you're renting the software, but it, you're using your own hardware. Uh, this happens sometimes in organizations that have some um, PCI compliant data and for whatever reason, they don't want to open it up to a cloud like Amazon Web Services or Azure and they need this to be internal. Acumatica really does have a global reach. It's probably a new name to many of you, but it is the fastest growing cloud ERP company. At this point in time, we have over 3,500 customers and there's sales and support across the globe. Um, you can see that the closest office to Pennsylvania is Ohio, uh, just right next door, and that's where the level two support offices are located. Uh, Acumatica's global headquarters is based out of Seattle, Washington, right down the street from some other uh, not so known vendors like Amazon and Microsoft. And uh, there's another piece to Acumatica's business model that I just want to mention briefly that really gives it some viability, even though it may not be a, uh, a household name early in 2017, and that's their global reach through their white label channel. Um, some of these uh, organizations that have adopted Acumatica as the cloud technology and framework that they are moving their ERP solutions to to then sell to their existing customers and new customers um, are listed here. And that would be MYOB, Lexware, Sensa, Visma, and Exeo. And these are organizations with strong financial backing that come behind Acumatica and say, there's something different about this licensing. There's something different about this technology and also the functionality. And we want to be a part of that. So I do have just a number of Acumatica uh, customers listed here. Uh, I like to throw this up, even though this specific webinar is for nonprofits, um, just because everybody likes to see some names that they recognize. And I'm sure just taking a quick look there, you can see a few that you recognize. And then I would like to just also put up our, a few of our most recent nonprofit customers. Uh, that would be the Cesar Chavez Foundation in the Greater Bay Area, um, Communitas International, which is an organization that has um, about 120 missionary families located all over the world. We have a number of, uh, of customers, and uh, if at any point we are in a process with you and we're lucky enough to be one of the vendors that you'd be considering, we would be more than happy to match you with a customer that's similar to you to uh, talk about their experience using Acumatica Nonprofit Plus. Acumatica has uh, a number of accolades to its name. It uh, seems to get more and more every year. Uh, so I'd just like to again mention that uh, they are really moving the ground in cloud ERP uh, and leading the way. So at this point in the, dem in the uh, webinar today, you might be asking yourself, uh, you know, we haven't talked about nonprofit functionality yet. And we've talked a lot about the licensing and how it's cloud and how it's accessible everywhere and unlimited users, but we haven't yet talked about myself as a nonprofit. And so we're going to take a turn and do exactly that. I'm going to drill into some very specific functionality that your next ERP solution needs to have as a nonprofit organization. Um, if not all of these, then it's going to be some of these. Um, so some of these might get you excited more than others, and that's just fine. But I like to mention, um, we talked about the strong technology. Let's talk about the, the enhanced uh, functionality available for nonprofits through this nonprofit accounting suite for Acumatica. And kind of the four pillars of what we offer is fund accounting and fund management. Okay, so we're talking about those uh, redistribution, do to do from entries, keeping your funds in balance. Uh, fund management, we'll, we'll just show you a quick screenshot of how we manage restricted funds, avoid the commingling of cash. Uh, we have a, a very robust grant management module um, and a grant record. Uh, this isn't like your project accounting module maybe that you had to use in the past or uh, I know some of our QuickBooks customers use jobs in QuickBooks. This is a native grant management module that's going to allow you to actually manage your grants inside of your ERP side by side with your financial data 
and uh, really be able to have this integrated solution work for you to track grant expenses, to do drawdowns for reimbursements, um, really anything you can think of related to grant accounting, you would see in our system. And then the last item is encumbrance accounting and budget protection. Um, Acumatica has a wonderful procurement suite and that includes purchase requisitions, purchase requests, and purchase orders. And throughout that workflow, uh, even into accounts payable, we have enf enhanced functionality to be able to process and manage encumbrances all the way from being a reserved uh, cost, maybe four to six months out before you might uh, actually be paying for it. But you would then have uh, very quick access to all of the things that you need. And I forgot to put myself on do not disturb, so I apologize. So we're, we're gonna drill into each of these just a little bit more. Uh, our fund accounting piece uh, allows you to demonstrate your accountability and stewardship. Uh, I have just a quick snapshot here of the, of the fund accounting system setup, and the reason I do that is there's not much to show you from a, a processing standpoint, which is great. The data entry person goes in, they enter the AP bill, um, as long as this, the fund accounting system and this, the configuration has happened, the system is going to do the balancing for you and write those due to do from entries, keeping your funds in balance. So that at any point in time, you can go run a trial balance by fund and see that your funds are in balance, even though you're constantly having a crossover of activity. Okay, uh, We have a two-step approach to this. First, we do a redistribution, um, and then we wind up backing them out and doing an actual do to do from entry. Uh, and that's all, that, that can be audited at the actual invoice level. We'll take an invoice as an example. And uh, Acumatica allows you to drill all the way into GL and see exactly what happened, um, what, what activity is happening from a GL perspective. We also have a fund management module. Uh, in addition to the setup that occurs for fund accounting, I have a quick snapshot of just our fund record. And this allows you to properly define funds and eliminate the commingling of cash. And as nonprofits, we all manage different types of funds, uh, most likely uh, at least three, uh, in addition to any investment or endowment funds that you could have, but um, restricted, unrestricted, and temp restricted funds. So we really allow you to build out as many funds as you need um, and have different statuses of funds, group them in classes for reporting, um, do account and sub-account restrictions on funds, even down to employees. If certain employees should have access to funds and others should not, um, you can certainly uh, manage that as well. Uh, the most important thing about setting up a fund in our system is the ability to associate a cash account to specific funds. And this is how we eliminate the commingling of cash. So that anytime a specific uh, fund is being used, we know this fund needs to also use this cash account. Uh, from a, a grant management point of view, I, I talked about our grant maintenance uh, screen, our grant record, our grant module. So uh, just a couple highlights here. Again, I, I would love, we could do an hour um, webinar on just grant uh, management best practices. So a few things in addition to already what I've mentioned, we allow you to manage grants across fiscal years, manage grant budgets and use um, budget checking, which is uh, part of that encumbrance accounting and budget protection setup that we talked about. And then also to be able to create employee account and sub-account restrictions on grants. Um, so similar to what you saw in fund management, we can have um, account restrictions, sub-account restrictions, employee restrictions. And the way that all of these restrictions come into play are, let's say that you have a grant manager that has full access to everything. Um, but then I have a number of uh, individuals in the organization that sometimes travel and need to expense, um, they, have, they have reimbursable expenses on those grants. Well, this allows you to be able to give them access to the grant only in the expense claims module. So that while they're on the road, they're maybe snapping pictures with their Acumatica mobile app, accruing these expenses, and then they eventually slide over to either the grant manager or the department manager, however you're doing your budgeting, um, for approval. Okay. Um, and then once again, we're in one centralized ERP, so all of that activity is then going to be uh, fed into the subsidiary module in this example, accounts payable, and eventually wind up in general ledger. 
So uh, our grant management module does a whole lot more than what I, I just showed you, um, but any, any uh, true cloud ERP cutting edge grant management system that's integrated to the, the rest of the accounting system really should have all of these things available um, to be able to do managing grants, employees on those grants, tasks on those grants, um, approvals, separate budgets, multiple years. Hopefully what I'm saying resounds with you and, and some of these things are maybe a little painful for you right now. Lastly, I would like to talk about the encumbrance accounting and budget protection functionality. Um, I'm actually gonna go back a screen just to show you our grant summary inquiry. Um, Acumatica has three different ways to view data. There's dashboards, there's inquiries, and then there's your standard financial reports. Um, what you might be used to if you're more familiar with say Crystal or possibly FRX, uh, setting up units and rows and, and uh, columns and trees, things like that. Um, what, what we're looking at here is a very flexible inquiry screen that some users have access to if they have been given access to the grant summary. So uh, let's just take my child and family services grant at the top as an example. And here I have uh, a reserved ledger. This is activity that uh, through our encumbrance accounting functionality and budget protection uh, setup, we're saying any activity for this grant that flows through the um, request module, something that's being requested by an employee, is going to go into this reserved bucket, okay? Um, this, this gives us a full snapshot of any expenditures well before the time they occur. Uh, we've all been there where we receive an invoice, something hits our accounts payable, and uh, we have to pay it at this point, but it would have been nice to know, aside from maybe an email that was sent to us three months ago or a Google sheet somewhere, that this was coming up. Uh, so this really gives us a nice snapshot by grant. Uh, anything in the encumbered column means that it's been processed as a purchase order, and uh, our actual is our actual ledger. Now, uh, the Nonprofit Plus system inside of Acumatica does a number of additional calculations for you. One, they will total these three, reserved, encumbered, and actual, to really give you a commitment accounting view of your grant. What are my grant's full commitments? And for this period, 11,000, okay, 11,207. Uh, what's my budgeted amount here? 11,320, okay? So it's gonna then do a few more calculations for you. Uh, one neat thing about Acumatica, uh, from this simple inquiry, we could shoot this out to Excel. Um, if I like to see the screen one way, I get to kind of shift the columns around and hit save, and that way next time I come in, the, the columns look the way that I want them to for myself as a user, and I didn't touch anybody else's user role. So I realize this isn't a big flashy dashboard to show you, but I think it explains uh, in three minutes how our encumbrance accounting works. Uh, in addition to that, we have the budget protection features. And here what we're really talking about is an over budget approval mapping. Uh, so we can actually, at the point of request, requisition or purchase order, we can say this document cannot be advanced until it's approved by the budget manager. So that budget man manager would have to be identified, maybe the grant manager, maybe the controller, uh, whoever happens to be in your organization. And then the, uh, the over budget uh, expenditure would have to be approved in order for that uh, document to move on into a purchase order and then again into accounts payable. So some really good functionality to use the system to adhere to your budget, not just watch it happen in reports. Uh, we're really big on using the data that's in the system. Uh, any accounting system is gonna let you import your budget, right, and then run an actual budget. Um, what we try to do is take it a step further and leverage that data, that budget ledger, or you could have many budget ledgers in Acumatica, we leverage that to then be used to interact with end users throughout their daily tasks so that they know, hold on, this cannot move forward, something is out of whack here. And uh, then there's some automation around that as well. Uh, went over the reserved and encumbered funds and uh, we talked a little bit about one of the inquiry screens. Uh, we do have a budget checker tool. This is just a kind of an example of it. So that at any screen, I can hit the budget checker button and it's gonna do a quick account, sub account, budget check. And it'll see, um, Here's the account, here's the sub account. 
here's my, my period. Uh, this I'm looking at period to date, and you can see we're not doing so hot in this screenshot here that I took. Um, this transaction $67, and there's zero budget allotted for this period. So I could change to year to date, see what's going on. Maybe the money's been spent already, which is unfortunate because we're only in, uh, we're only in July. <laughs> A few other things I'd just like to mention, uh, we'll be wrapping it up here and having a couple of questions in a minute. Uh, there are some other features outside of these core modules I mentioned. One is the enhanced vendor bidding. Another one is volunteer management, managing volunteer time, being able to report on that time, as we all know, um, at, at a end of year reporting and for board reports and even down to our 990, it's important to be able to put a value on those volunteer hours. Uh, so we provide you a mechanism use, of using the time card, using a volunteer record to actually track that. And then the last piece is what we call distribution codes. Uh, think about you're entering in the bill and you constantly allocate it the same way. Maybe the electricity bill, you're spreading it over your, uh, a couple of funds or a few grants or a combination of the two, the same way each month. Uh, you can actually create a quick distribution code for that so that when your accounts payable person is entering in that bill, they select electricity code and boom, it's going to then break it out and code it the way and distribute that balance in the way that makes sense uh, that you've specified. And it happens really quick too. Um, and then everybody gets to move on with their work and we minimize data entry error. So that was hopefully uh, just a quick overview of what a cloud solution looks like and also what. Uh, five really important things that you could be looking for in your next accounting solution. Uh, just a quick review of that would be a cloud environment, a true cloud, one that you're going to a browser, one that you can access from a mobile app. Um, and, uh, the other portions of that were really related to functionality. Grant management, if you're managing grants, uh, fund management module, uh, fund accounting functionality, and then lastly, the encumbrances and the budget protection features. So I, I hope that that was helpful for everybody. I wanna stay true to our time limit, but I would also like to handle a couple of questions if we have some questions come in. Um, Tim, do, do we have any questions uh, so far? Uh, yeah, one quick question, it looks like. The, um, you mentioned reporting and dashboards. And uh, that Acumatica does have some standard dashboards built in. Are there any other reporting options that um, the uh, attendees should know about from, you know, Acumatica and Nonprofit Plus? Yeah, there, there are a couple others that, uh, in addition to the inquiries, dashboards, and kind of standard reports, one in particular would be Power BI, and that's a connector uh, via OData protocol. Um, which allows you to pull in data from the Acumatica database into this uh, very, it could be free depending on your Office 365 subscription um, from Microsoft, to be able to pull in into one centralized place and then be able to look at the data in a couple of ways. It allows you to really do some reporting, almost blow out, let's say, donors by state and see it geographically on the map of the United States. Uh, that's just one example of, of what you can do with that really neat tool from Microsoft. Uh, there are a number of other ad hoc features that we could discuss. There's some reports now in the mobile app as well. Uh, so lots of different reporting options. It's really in the implementation picking which route is, are we most comfortable with and then moving forward. Um, I'm looking at the clock here. It's 1.30. I will... Uh, I'll hang on the chat here and answer any questions um, once I stop sharing my screen. But I really appreciate everybody's time today on the call. I appreciate uh, our friends from Empower and Tim being on today. Uh, anybody in the greater Pennsylvania uh, or central and western Pennsylvania region specifically considering a new accounting system, if you're a nonprofit or not, uh, Empower is a really great option for you, one we stand behind, and I know Acumatica does as well. So thanks, everybody, for your time. Thank you, Tim, for being here. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to hang around, and I can be on the chat, or um, feel free to get in touch with us, and 
I will be following up with a recording of this for your uh, purposes as well, and you'll have my contact information. Thanks, everyone. Take care.